So a lot of new investors out there, even new traders, maybe not know where to get started. And for me, at least, if I could go back in time and tell myself when I got started in markets or even just doing things with my money, this would probably be the first video I would tell myself to watch. Literally, I wish I could go back in time and just say, Steph, sit down, play this video on repeat, and let this video inspire you from this day forward. So I'm going to click play and just check this out. I'll pause it as we go through just to provide some quick commentary. If you don't understand it, it doesn't work. This is the single biggest principle. And it bothers me that people are very careful of their money. The public, when they buy a refrigerator, they get a consumer reports, they buy a microwave oven, they do that. They ask people what's the best kind of radar range or, they, or what kind of car to buy. They do research on the apartments. When they, go to, when they go on a trip to Wyoming, they get the mobile travel guide or California. When they go to Europe, they get the Michelin travel guide. People will hear a tip on a bus on some stock and they'll put half their life savings <laughs> in it before sunset and they wonder why they lose money in the stock market. And when they lose money, they blame it on the institutions and program trading. Okay, that is just absolutely so on point on so many levels. And pay attention to how hilarious this is because look how old this video is. Look at the quality of the camera. He mentioned Michelin guides, which was a physical guide you brought with you in the car while you drove around looking for places to stop. There was no iPhone or Google Maps. You had a physical guide in your hands. But the point that he's making is how much research people do in their lives. If I go buy a refrigerator, for my place where I live, you better believe I will spend months looking at the best refrigerator, looking at the prices, the features, what am I getting. If I buy a TV, I'm on Amazon, I'm on Best Buy, I'm trying to understand what the best prices are. But how true is it? Especially if you were a new investor, how quickly have you just dropped a few hundred dollars into a stock without thinking twice? How quickly have you just dropped a few thousand dollars into even a cryptocurrency without thinking twice? It happens all the time. The speed and ease to drop money into an investment just because of a tip, the FOMO, you've got fear of missing out, you don't want to miss out on a trade, you feel like it's going to take off without you, so you just throw money at it. But it's the same thing as all the other things in your life, whether you're buying a car, whether you're buying a refrigerator, a TV, a new computer, Xbox, maybe a game's on sale on your Xbox, you go read, review, take that same level of research to markets all the time. That's what I would tell myself if I could go back in time. I think many of you may relate to that. Let's replay this with Peter. Let's keep this going. That is garbage. They didn't do any research. They bought a piece of junk. They didn't look at the balance sheet. And that's what you get for it. And that's what we were being driven to. And it's self-fulfilling. The public does terrible investing, and they, they say they don't have a chance. It's because that's the, way they're, that's the way they're acting. I'm trying to convince people there is a method. There are reasons for stocks that go up. Uh, Coca-Cola, this is very magic, it's a very magic number, easy to remember, Coca-Cola is earning 30 times per share what they did 32 years ago. The stock has gone up 30 fold. So I gotta say that is excellent, but remember times have changed, Coca-Cola now kind of a sugary soft drink, I don't think that applies today, but at, his, at this point in time it made sense. And I have to say what I love about that is at that time everyone understood Coca-Cola. And it's just buying what you understand, buying what you can research, what you can test. There's this great method about public market investing, which I think is also interesting. And it is, it is essentially, if you can't go test it, or if you've never used it before, if you can't speak about it in under 60 seconds, don't even think about buying it. So some of these elaborate stocks, you read a news article, you see a news headline, now you suddenly think you have to own it. Stop. Stop right there. Think about this speech that I'm playing here, that I've found and presented here, and instead ask yourself this next question. Can I explain this company in under 60 seconds because I've used it and because I've reviewed it and because I even find value in it myself? That will save everyone out there who wants to be an investor time, money, stress, just that quick 60-second mental model. And I have to say on this speech from Peter Lynch, I don't necessarily agree with the fact that there's a, you know, a, a formula for winning in the stock market. It's too random. There's too many people out there. There's no formula, but there is a way to make less bad decisions is what I think he's trying to say. And one way to make less bad decisions is to essentially do what he was saying earlier in the video. I'm just going to jump back because it's my, one of my favorite quotes ever. I could play this on repeat. 
refrigerator, they get a consumer report, so they buy a microwave oven, they do that. They ask people what's the best kind of radar range or, they, or what kind of car to buy. They do research on the apartments. When they, go to, when they go on a trip to Wyoming, they get the mobile travel guide or California. When they go to Europe, they get the Michelin travel guide. People will hear a tip on a bus on some stock and they'll put half their life savings <laughs> in it before sunset and they wonder why they lose money in the stock market. And when they lose money, they blame it on the institutions and program trading. That is garbage. They didn't do any research. They bought a piece of junk. They didn't look at the balance sheet. And that's what you get for it. Absolutely love that. I want to comment on one more thing here before I end this quick video clip. Sort of an educational lesson that I'm sharing. It's the whole point of my YouTube channel, by the way. I'm trying to bring as much free content to markets as I can. I've been doing this for over a decade working with professional traders, whether they work in a hedge fund or an institution. I've been working with new traders, maybe like you, like I was when I was still back in college. I've been essentially across the whole spectrum. And one thing I decided to do is now I want to make everything I know public and accessible. And on that note, I find it really amusing that Peter Lynch talks about people blaming it on institutions algorithms, high frequency trading, big trading groups. That happens to this day. Look how old this video is. It's just incredible how some human behavior doesn't change. If you go to sites like Twitter, like stock tweets, like Seeking Alpha, comment sections on Yahoo Finance, you'll see people literally to this day still blaming institutions. They might be saying the institutions did this, the short interest did that, the toots, right? The toots is a sort of a, you know, a, a shorter way of saying institutions. And I'm not saying they don't do that. There's definitely lots of dirty tactics in markets. But the point is, human behavior hasn't changed. People go out there, they just buy a random, ridiculous stock for no reason because they heard a tip. There's no research. They did not apply the same methodology that they would apply if they bought a refrigerator or a TV or a new car. In fact, I would press everyone, how much time did you spend on the last car you bought? I know I spent several months. I think my wife was pretty upset with me I was spending so much time because we needed that car for our for our kid that was coming we needed a car but I was so sort of focused on doing all my research getting the right product not getting ripped off buying what I was paying for at a fair value that same methodology needs to apply needs to be applied to everything in life specifically investments I think that's that's the key thing about this clip and I really hope you all found some um, you know really some value in this. I'm just going to play it through to the end and then we'll wrap up here. The stock has gone up 30 fold. Bethlehem Steel is earning less than they did 30 years ago. The stock is half its price of 30 years ago. Stocks are not lottery tickets. There's a company behind every stock. If a company does well, the stock does well. It's not that complicated. People get too carried away. And first of all, they try and predict the stock market. That is a total waste of time. No one can predict the stock market. They try to predict the interest rates. I mean, this is a, if anybody would predict interest rates right three times in a row, they'd be a billionaire. Considering there's not that many billionaires on the planet, it's very, you know, I took, I had logic, so I had a syllogism and uh, studied these when I was at Boston College. There can't be that many people who can predict interest rates because there'd be lots of billionaires. So on that note, that is another thing that you'll find on my new YouTube channel. It's a very simple way to deduce current markets. If markets were easy, if they could be predicted, if you knew as much as you thought you did, that there was easy money, you would be rich, many of other people would be rich. But the simple fact is, majority of traders lose money. 90% plus of all traders on this planet lose money. And even more, try it once, they lose, they never come back. That alone should tell you how hard this is, and that alone should tell you that a lot of the things you see online, a lot of the messages you get, group chats, quick money, anything, is probably fake false or is out there to deceive you so someone else can make more money and that just brings us back to the start of this video and why i recorded it do your research do your research and if i could go back in time i would tell myself steph the same way you researched that video game that you bought the same way that you researched the tv you bought you should do for every single investment from here onward you should never ever buy anything without doing at least a specific amount of rigorous research and thus being able to explain what that product or what that investment is, why it matters to you, and how you use it based on your personal reviews 
in that under sort of 60 seconds time frame that I was mentioning earlier. And you will truly find it'll make a huge difference in your trading and investing. The next time you go to buy or trade something, you're going to say to yourself, wait a second, have I used this product? Do I know it? Is it actually something that I'm familiar with and I can explain it? And those three quick questions will really take you down a more thoughtful path before you go do something impulsive and without the research it requires. For whatever reason, markets trick people all over the world, all throughout history, and they continue to do it. I don't know why, but I think a lot of it stems from sort of a approach that people don't think they have to do this level of research because they think it's a sort of a get-rich-quick opportunity, which continues throughout time to, to really trick people. But there's just no such thing. Do your research.